Okay, it's um, the end of July and video diary number four. Um, and I suppose what I have realised since posting the first video diary in May, and I think I might have mentioned it before, is that patience is actually a creative element uh, in making sculpture. Um, and maybe it's one that we don't give full recognition to. Um, I thought that the patience was just something necessary, but now I realise that it's actually part of the creative process. Um, I started uh, in May with etchings and doing working drawings on acetate and um, looking at religious images and um, was surprised, I suppose, um, at the kind of forms that were emerging because I, um, I noticed there at one stage Barbara on Google Plus mentioned that um, she found she was moving away from the familiar and from uh, the type of materials and things that she was used to, whereas I actually had a strong reaction to that because I found that uh, I was surprised that, that um, a lot of the shapes that were emerging um, were the type of shapes that I would have um, used 20 something years ago um, when I was in art college and um, I mentioned this at I think at a Hidel studio visit and I think maybe it was Hidel, somebody anyhow certainly said that maybe it was unfinished business and um, I think I think there was something in that um, but I suppose I I was looking forward to this month when um, I was going to start making because I felt at the end of last month that I had done I suppose um, enough drawing to um, to actually start making that I felt the drawing had um, I come to a point where I was ready to to make something so um, I went to the woodwork room in school and I um, I cut these out um, and then I went to a joinery here, Tanktee's joinery just up the road and um, Jerry there let me use the plane and it was it was just lovely to go back to actually making something because I I suppose when I left art college, and I remember saying this to Fiona at one stage, when I left art college I was like um, Little Britain's only gay in the village. I was the only artist in the village and I kind of fell into a role of um, doing sort of portraits of children's first communions and in one case uh, a couple of lads who came to an untimely end um, in uh, a car that bore a sticker, God is my co-driver. So in sitting room walls in Lucy Casey and Coolmean and places are that's that's all I have to show for the last twenty years really of paintings in very dodgy frames. So it was um lovely to get back to to doing something like this. Um so when I was at Barbara's studio visit, um you'd have seen these already. I cut out a whole lot of these, I think I've about forty or fifty of them. Um and they were based on the um shapes um, I suppose when I was a child, um, I used to sit watching my grandmother knitting and her fingers were really twisted and I thought at the time that they were twisted in that position from holding the wool, the constant, constant knitting, that her fingers actually had developed that shape. But of course I know now that it was arthritis. I've seen my own mother's fingers go exactly the same way and my own little pinky is beginning to take on that shape. So that shape has come through the generations, um, you know, very, um, very definitely. Um, so I have taken that shape and um, it's also uh, sort of based on the, the loosely on the, the quill shape. And um, I uh, put these together then, played around with them for a long time before I actually came up with what I was going to do but I had 
said in my last video diary that I had lovely um, balls of um, thread that my mother had kept from old flower bags and it's lovely soft but strong thread so I took that out and I again I was saying to um, those at Barbara's um, studio visit that I had canvas in my mother's house um, that she had bought for me when I was starting art college because I had no idea at that stage whether I was going to do sculpture, painting, whatever. And of course it was never used because I did sculpture. Uh, so I took that canvas and I did what I was itching to do. I started sewing. I stuck the pieces of timber together and I just, I suppose quite crudely really, I just uh, stuck them with a glue gun um, in here. And this was the the piece that I was really dying to get at. Um, now I videoed myself doing this because I have realised in the course of Rev uh, by comments made uh, by others on my blog um, that actually the actions and my um, my constantly returning to these actions um, is I suppose what's what's coming through and what's really important and I I have to say myself that um, I realise during Rev the validity of the life that I lead and I feel very strongly that unless I understand and validate that life, my actions every day, then I will never understand anything really. So I am um, the action of actually sewing. I have videoed that and um, I'm at the moment trying to upload it here onto YouTube. Um, but each video clip that I took is about three hours long, I think, and I have maybe nine hours of that. So um, at the moment it's at about 3%, but hopefully it'll be up in the next day or two. Um, so I as I say, I videoed myself sewing these. I also put up actually um, some clips um, that I talked about three weeks ago when my Auntie Mary stayed with me and she was knitting and sewing and darning things. And uh, it was just lovely to um, to photograph her hands at that work. Um, so what has, I suppose, surprised me is that um, this finished piece, well, I have to say, I, I really like um, I really like what I ended up with um, but and I know Sheila will laugh at this because what I'm now thinking is that the actual videos of the sewing um, are what's becoming more important to me the, the actions and I had said to Sheila at the beginning of this course that I was going to stay as far away from technology as possible and I can't believe that I'm um, actually thinking about putting together um, a little multimedia piece and maybe using these as a screen or um, Lorraine, thank you Lorraine, uh, offered very kindly at uh, Idel Studio Visit to help me um, with creating a piece that I could use this piece of sculpture or a piece of sculpture as a trigger for a multimedia piece for um, a video audio of these actions that would be triggered by this piece of sculpture i can't remember the actual technical terms that you use for it but that this can actually be used to when a person holds their ipad up in front of this that it will trigger um, it will trigger the, the, the audio or the visual of me actually doing the sewing or of maybe my aunt's hands or maybe maybe some other some other piece, I don't know. Um, I was going to make only one of these but um, at Barbara's I was talking about them um, and I just had the sticks at that stage. And Kieran Gallagher quite rightly pointed out that as they were this type of wing shape that really 
there should be two and I suppose as what I'm dealing with is mortality and um, I have wanted from the beginning to make something that is a tribute in a way to both of my parents I it made sense to make two so I have made one quite upright I can't really show it you now so what I'll do is I'll take a photograph of it and I'll put it up and um, so I made this one which is quite straight and quite um quite I suppose uh like my mother it was my my father in in, in later years was, was stooped um and I always felt that was